It's winter in New York and it's time to gear up for winter hiking. In this video, I'm going to go over all the gear I use for winter day hikes in western New York and the gear I add to my pack for winter 46ers in the Adirondacks. I'm Mike and this is Outside Chronicles. I love everything outside. And if you do too, you're going to want to click that subscribe button, hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. Being prepared in winter is vital. The consequences if something were to go wrong is much higher during the cold season. So in addition to my personal locator beacon and pocket knife, I'm going to show you all of the gear that I take with me for day hikes in the winter, both in western New York and the Adirondacks. So let's dive right into the gear. Before I go into what's in my pack for winter hiking, I'm going to go over what I have on my body that's a little bit extra. I'm not going to go over all of the layering systems that I have in this video. If you want to see a video about that, let me know in the comments. So first off is my gloves. I have Reynolds syndrome and my hands will turn bright white when they get cold. So I'm really careful about my hands. And I found these Gordini gloves are awesome. They're Gore-Tex, they're super warm and they've been really great in very cold temperatures. Then I have just a beanie. This is just a North Face beanie. One item that I love is my buff. And the reason I love this is I put this around my neck usually, and it'll keep the snow from going down the back of my neck. Then if it gets really cold, I can put this up over the top of my head and put my hat over it. And this is a really, really warm, around without going with a full balaclava. And then what if you get really cold, you can bring this up over the top, or if you start getting heated and it's too much for a hat and you wanna actually vent some steam out the top of your hat, you can wear this just as a bandana headband and um, it does a really nice job. So I love my buff. And then the final item that I add on are gaiters. These are Eastern Mountain Sports gaiters. I think they're just Outdoor Research Gators rebranded. Um, they're the tall kind, and they really do a good job of keeping the wet and the snow out of your boots. Okay, so now to my pack. On the outside, you see I have my snowshoes. And in Western New York, you pretty much know before you hit the trail whether you're gonna need snowshoes or not, so you're really not having to attach them to your pack. In the Adirondacks, that's a different story. It could be almost green grass at the trailhead and you can hit several inches of snow at the summits. So I strap them on my my pack and these are my MSR Evo Ascents. These are these have the extra Televator heel for climbing mountains. I love these snowshoes. I've had them for several years. They're super durable. They've gotten me up many high peaks in the Adirondacks. I love the extra rails on the side for extra traction. They're rock solid, the bindings are great. I did a review on these and I always recommend these to anybody who needs to buy some snowshoes. Then on the outside, I have my hiking poles. These are Comptrell Mountaineer hiking poles. I've had them for years. They've come with me on many adventures. I think it's time to retire these. These are kind of getting beat up. A leaky or a black diamond is probably in my future. Also on the outside of my bag, I put my water bottles. If it's a short day hike, I'll just take this one with me. It's a Hydroflax vacuum sealed water bottle. You can fill it with cold water or hot water and it'll not freeze for a very long time on the trail, even in sub-zero conditions. And if I'm going on a little bit longer hike and I need to carry a little bit more water, I'll supplement that with my nail gene. And what I do is store it upside down and in a wool sock. And I'll usually try to drink this one first, or if I have hot water in this hydro flask, I will drink half of this and then pour some of the hot water back into here to keep it from freezing. So now to the top of my bag is where I keep uh, my flashlight. This is the Nightcore NU25. I did a good review on this. I love the flashlight. It's very, very bright. I also keep my compass. Always have a map and compass with you. Hand warmers and feet warmers. Now, I've actually had good luck with these in normal conditions, but if it gets too cold, the actual chemical reaction doesn't take place. And I'll show you what I bring sometimes to the high peaks when it's super cold a little bit later. Sunglasses, 
Always want to have sunglasses when there's snow on the ground. You can almost blind yourself if it's a, if it's a bright day. Micro spikes are always a must, whether you're in western New York, in the high peaks, or any other really place where you're going to encounter ice. I use Catula micro spikes. Hill sound trails are also a good choice. They're a little more aggressive than these. I may give those a try, but the Catula micro spikes have done me well both in western New York and the Adirondacks. Of course, we have toilet paper and baby wipes just in case. And then the last thing I have in the top here is just a towel, whether it's to wipe off goggles, sunglasses, or my GoPro, um, it comes in handy. All right, so now let's go into the main pack. Oh, and by the way, this is an Osprey Talon 33 day pack. I love this pack. It's great for overnights in the summer. Also perfect for winter when you have a lot more gear for day hikes. So in the top here, I have my winter shell, and this is a north-faced wind wall shell. You, wind can be blowing like crazy with this thing, and it keeps you super warm and insulated under even the worst conditions. So that's always in my bag. I usually hike in a fleece and a base layer. Uh, I find that I get too hot. I'll only put that on at summits when it's really windy or if it's really, really cold outside. I usually take my Catadyne Bee Free water purification system with me just in case I need to fill up with some water. One thing to watch out with this guy and also your Sawyer products is these could freeze. So if you think you need to refill on the trail, put this in your coat so it warms up next to the heat of your body and it will actually be usable with the water. And then in my bag, I'll show it to you here. I have a Osprey bag liner. It's um, the small size, which is for 30 to 50 liters. So anything I don't want to get wet on the trail, I throw into this bag liner. And on every hike, I definitely take an extra hat and gloves. I, again, these are uh, Gordini mitts, and they are also super warm. Uh, you never know, even on day hikes here in western New York, I was out with a friend and he broke through some ice and tripped and fell and got wet and he needed an extra pair of gloves and I also have an extra pair of, or extra hat with me. Then I'll also always carry my puffy jacket. This is just a down puffy jacket. I can put it on and then put my shell over the top of it if I really need to get some warmth. And in addition to the extra gloves, Always extra pair of wool socks. Never know when you're gonna need those. I have my first aid kit. Um, it's pretty basic, but it has all of the necessities. And then I just have my survival gear. And in here I have Strike Anywhere matches in a pill bottle to keep them safe. I have my Soul Survive Outdoors Longer bivy sack. I'll take that now on every trail, whether it's in the winter or in the summer. I always have my bivy sack with me. You never know when you're going to need it. I have a tin of Tinder, which is cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly. I have storm matches, which are awesome. You can light them, throw them underwater, and they're great. A fixed blade knife, some paracord, an extra lighter, extra flashlight, some extra batteries, a poncho, so just basic survival stuff uh, goes in this bag for me. And one thing that I've been carrying with me, most hikes in Western New York, you don't need it. I'll carry it when I go to Zor Valley, just in case. And in the high peaks, I've been carrying it with me. This is actually 50 feet, I braid it. I can maybe do a video one day of how to braid this like this. But this is 50 feet of one inch webbing. Um, it comes in great when we're rafting, but it also comes in great if you have a really steep area and you can throw it down, leave it, and come back on your way back, grab it. Um, also would come in handy if you need to create a litter to carry somebody out. So I've been carrying that with me more and more. Uh, it's very light. It doesn't take up a lot of room, and it you know, could save somebody's life. And the one thing that I didn't say, I said I had a compass. 
but I always have a trail map with me also in my pack. So now these are the items that I would take on a winter 46er in addition to all the items I just went over. So the first thing is I have these lightweight silk gloves that I will usually wear most of the time. Um, they're nice because if you get too heated, they still keep your hands somewhat warm. But then if you get cold, you can just put them right over your gloves and they keep your hands warm. Like I said, I have Reynolds, so I'm very, very careful about those. So just some lightweight gloves. I'll also take a heavier balaclava. This will be in addition to the buff and will keep you warm you know, in the very sub-zero temperatures as you reach the summits. I'll also carry an extra headlamp. And in addition to that, I will also carry a small battery pack. This is just one I got on Amazon. It's a U-Green 10,000 milliamp battery pack that I can recharge my night core. I can recharge a phone or my watch. It comes in handy, very lightweight, and will recharge a bunch of things a couple times over. And don't forget cables for your headlamp, for your GoPro, for your phone. Remember your USB cables. Then I also take a tarp with me. I've showed this a couple times in different videos. This is the Arcturus tarp. Never know if you need to create a shelter in the snow. Uh, the bivy sack is great, but having a tarp, even better. So I'll take both of those with me. And then I also just take a small cook kit with me. I have a, just a cardboard piece of cardboard with 3M uh, furnace tape over the top of it. And then I have just a small cook kit. And I won't usually take the compressed gas. My normal uh, MSR pocket rocket with the compressed gas doesn't really work in cold temperatures. You can kind of get around it by putting it in your jacket and warming it up for a while. What I've gone to for emergencies is just this small cat food container with some heat. I have an aluminum foil windscreen just in case. I have enough fuel here to bring several cups of water to boiling and it will work in very cold temperatures where that compressed gas will fail you. And then I just have this to insulate me from the ground. I, I think it helps a little bit. It makes it a flat surface to be able to put that flame. Then I'll also always bring goggles. Uh, the wind up at the high peaks can be just whipping. Uh, it can be very cold, which can freeze your eyes. So occasionally you will need goggles as you reach the summits. Remember to keep these inside your coat and warm because if they're cold, and you put it on your warm face, they're gonna fog up instantly. So if you think you're gonna need goggles, put them inside your coat for a while so they warm up before you use them. And then I have an ice ax. And this is just a black diamond ice ax. Again, I have some webbing around here just in case I need to clip it into my pack or my, my belt. And if you look on here, I have made, this is just Kydex. So I made just a sleeve that goes around so I don't uh, poke myself accidentally if it's inside of my pack. And then I'm just gonna show you really quick while I have my pack here, how I put this in my pack. So there's these loops on the outside and I slide it all the way through and then up. And then my pack has these couple uh, connectors for my trekking poles. So usually I'll have my trekking poles and my hands won't really be on my pack. So I'll connect this up right here, and then I'll have my ice axe there if I need it. I haven't really had to use it in the high peaks, um, but you don't want to be without it just in case you do run into some steep areas where you need to uh, either use it for some purchase or to self-arrest yourself. And then the final item that I'll throw in, as I said, those hand warmers are a chemical reaction. And sometimes if it's really, really cold, I found that it takes a long time for that chemical reaction to happen if it even does happen. So one thing that I have had good success with is there's these small Zippo hand warmers and they take lighter fluid and it works on some sort of magical catalytic uh, combustion system where it doesn't actually have a flame, but it gets very, very hot. 
You can put these inside of your gloves, warm yourself up. Uh, they work out really, really good. They're pretty lightweight and not too expensive. This is all of the gear I take for winter day hikes in Western New York and also winter 46ers in the Adirondacks. You can see how I have a few extra items when I go into the Adirondacks. Got to be prepared for different situations. If you have any questions about any of the gear, drop me a comment. I'll be sure to put links to the gear in the description. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button. And if you want to see other gear reviews, how to's, outdoor adventures, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Mm -hmm.